Good morning, everybody. We're coming to you live from the Torch Center. As many of you hopefully know, we have currently suspended all of our in-person classes. Sadly, I can't see all of you live in front of me at uh, Congregation Beth Yishurin this morning. It is certainly a privilege to be able to continue learning and using the greatest of technology to uh, continue to disseminate the word of Hashem and to learn together and hopefully be inspired with his words of, of Torah. Today, we're going to start a new topic, a new midah, a new trait, uh, one that we have not discussed yet, uh, something which is very, very important when we're, particularly in this situation, when we're dealing with a crisis, not only this crisis of coronavirus, and my blessing to all, not only all of our students, but all people across the globe, those who are affected by this, they should be healed, they should recover completely, they should have a refuah shlema, and uh, those who aren't should stay healthy, and we're looking forward to continue to celebrate with mankind. The challenge of coronavirus is just one element of our, of our culture that's facing a crisis. The second element of our culture that's facing a major crisis, particularly in the United States, is, for example, the political divide that we see in the world where uh, you have so many people who have a very strong opinion. You have a very polarized political world out there. And uh, how do we get to understand, appreciate, respect people who have differences of opinion, people who have different uh, motivations than we do, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to be talking about the trait of patience. And I think particularly today's generation where we're going to stores today's uh, this week, uh, where if anyone has gone to a, one of the big supermarkets or the big retail uh, warehouses like uh, Costco or Sam's Club, you see the, the, the craziness that's going on and all of the chaos and the panic. So how do we deal with this? How do we accept the differences that we have, we may have with other people? Okay, so, and that's in Hebrew, it's called savlanut. Savlanut means patience. So let's just understand something that Kindness, kindness is a trait that draws people together. Anger is a trait that distances people. You know, where does the trait of patience fall into? Well, patience falls into the trait of humility. And humility is one where, uh, if we're going to very briefly define what humility is, humility is the trait where I don't take the space of other people. I take my own space and don't need to drown out everybody else in order for me to be successful. Patience is that as well, is recognizing that every other person that is around me is perfectly legitimate in their own existence and they don't need to be like me. They don't need to see things the way I see it. They don't need to agree with me and I don't need to agree with them. And it's fine for their existence to continue the way it is uh, without my approval. So while true humility is a very big trait to acquire, patience is much, much easier to accomplish and is well within our reach. So patience is a general mida, is a general trait that influences and is rooted in many other traits. Its importance is great because if not harnessed properly, it can ruin friendships, and it can harm us greatly. So, for example, if uh, a friend calls you and they're complaining about the same thing they complained about last time you spoke to them, and, uh, you know, your, your, your sibling is upset about something that happened 20 years ago, and you're basically losing your patience with them, that loss of patience can hurt the relationship very, very badly that can harm the friendship that you have with someone else. Patience is, our sages say that the word savlanut comes from the word sabal. Sabal is, you know, they used to have the person who used to schlep the, the water uh, or the milk and would deliver it to the homes. That is a sabal, someone who was able to carry a burden on their shoulder. Patience is that exactly. Patience is when we are able to carry the burden on our shoulder. The burden of someone else's way of thinking, the burden of someone else's issues, 
it's not everything, you know, it's a very, very important thing. You know, thank God I've been very blessed to learn together with so many people in so many com- congregations throughout our community. And I don't see eye to eye with many of the people frequently. But I, one of the things that I learned, which is why I, about uh, now maybe 10 years ago, decided to talk about this topic, was because I wanted to work from, on myself on attaining this trait of patience properly. It was very, very special, and it, it really changed my whole life, my whole perspective on life, in that I was able to now appreciate that someone had a different opinion than me. I was able to pre- appreciate that someone thinks differently than me when it comes to politics, when it comes to life, when it comes to values, to morals, to ethics. It's fine for someone not to agree with me. And I've learned through the process of teaching that in this topic that it is perfectly okay to have a different opinion than someone else, right? Sometimes we get concerned or we're, we're upset if someone doesn't think the way we think. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Nothing's going to happen if someone disagrees with you. Nothing's going to happen if your opinion is not matched with everyone else. Guess what? Our sages teach us that there were 600,000 people, uh, men between the age of 20 and 60, standing at the foot of Mount Sinai. And the Torah says that there were 600,000 different opinions and different understandings to the words of the Ten Commandments. What's so complicated? The Ten Commandments, it's not so difficult. But guess what? It's You think about it like this, you know, you're, you're on a train and you're looking at a, a beautiful mountain, a beautiful view, a beautiful sight. And now as the train is moving, you still see that same mountain. For It could be for two hours, three hours. You're still seeing that same mountain. But you know what's happening is you're seeing it from a different perspective. And as the train is moving, you're still seeing that same mountain, but you're seeing a different perspective. And the idea of humanity is that every single human being is, a diff- is in a different cart in that train. And even when you see an exactly the same sight, you're seeing it from a very different perspective. You're seeing it from your own eyes, from your own experiences. It's very different. And that's great. Because that's what makes this world a beautiful world. When we're able to see the world from a full spectrum of perspectives, not everything needs to be exactly the way I see it. You know what? Uh, the One of the heated topics for the past 50 years in the United States since Roe v. Wade is the topic of abortion. And people split along party lines on this primarily, right? But it's really an amazing thing where you have two people could be very close to one another, but have completely different opinions on a very, very serious topic. And that doesn't need to end the relationship because you think differently than someone else. Right? I always tell people, if you want to work on the trait of patience, then call a friend of yours who you know has very, very different opinions than you in politics and treat them out for coffee and talk for one hour only about politics and listen to them and hear their reason. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to persuade them to your side and they don't have to persuade you to their side. But respect and appreciate that they have a different opinion than you do. Accept that you have your perspective and they have their perspective and their perspective is perfectly legitimate. And it doesn't need to go your way. They don't need to vote the way you vote. They don't need to think the way you think. They don't need to believe the way you believe. And that's fine. Nothing's going to happen if someone has, guess what? (laughs) We're living in, in the United States. We have 350 million people in the United States. Do you know how many other countries have people who believe that their country is the greatest country in the world and their uh, and their sports team is the greatest sports team in the world and that their, their culture is the best culture in the world and their food is the greatest food in the world and so what? So we believe that ours is the best. So that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with someone, have, someone having a different opinion. And we need to remember that this is a, it's a very fundamental principle in our growth is to allow for other people to shine as well. Allow for someone else to have their opinion. Allow for someone else to think the way they think. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly legitimate. And there's nothing wrong 
with someone else having their own space. Now, a couple gets together, right? It's inevitable that they will have differences. Each have different habits. They have different ways in which they grew up. They have different lifestyles that they lived, right? They have different skills. They have different talents, different abilities. Only with patience can they get along. A couple, a man and a woman, getting together is two different worlds coming together. There's only one way they can succeed in their relationship, and that is with patience, right? It's the same thing with partners in business. It's the same thing with friendships. It's the same thing with roommates in college and any other, any other type of joint project that you do with someone else, whatever the project of life, the project of a business, the project of anything that you do together with another person is exact, going to require exactly that same level of patience. Now, my rabbi used to say that he says having a difficult roommate in, in yeshiva or in college or in, 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 in school, it's an omen. It's a good omen for a happy marriage. Because if you learn to get along with someone who's a difficult roommate, you'll hopefully be able to get along better with your spouse. Because the differences of how a man and a woman live their lives, and then they come together in, under one roof and live a life together, right? This is the way he, you know, rolls the uh, toothpaste, and this is the way she rolls the toothpaste, and this is the way he hangs his clothes, and this is the way she folds her clothes, and everyone has their ways in which they, and now you have to get along. And you know what? The key, the number one tool that's required for success in any relationship is patience. That does not mean that you are a pushover and whatever they want goes. That's not, that's not what patience means. Patience means that there's no reason for me to get worked up by the differences between us. Right? That, and this, by the way, will manifest itself in many different ways. Right? You're in a supermarket and you're in a rush and the person in front of you decides that they're going to pay with a check. Okay. Do, do you know, you know, you know how that process works. They have to pull out their ID and then they can't find their ID. And then they, they have to sign here and they have to sign there and they have to process it like this and process it like that. And you're like, I, will, I have two items. I just got to move it. Let's go. Let's go. And, and people get very frustrated. And it's, it's a perfect way for someone to lose their calm and lose their cool by not having proper patience. So what is patience? Patience is like someone carrying a heavy load and even considering its weight, he continues walking with the load on his back, right? Even if we hear things which aren't our speed, our style, or, our, or to our liking, we can still remain friends. There's nothing wrong with remaining friends with someone that we disagree with. Someone criticizes, teases, insults, or complains unjustly to us, we can still carry the burden. That's fine. Nothing is going to happen not, it's not going to be so terrible if we are able to resist that attack of like, what's wrong with you? How, how come you're always complaining? How come you're always this? And how? It's okay. Take it easy. Take a deep breath and accept that there are differences. Accept, and you should just know that the minute we're able to accept that, the difference of how we are versus how other people are, they have a different way of thinking. And by the way, this, this connects to so many different traits because if you, if you connect this trait a little bit further, you'll see that this is also the trait of judging people favorably. Judging people favorably, is very, it, it's, an amazing, it's an amazing thing because you take, for example, this patience that you have. You see someone doing something, this trait of patience, right? So you, 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 you see someone doing something and you, you immediately want to rush to judgment. You're like, oh, I don't believe it. Look at this person. Look at, they're cutting the line, right? If a person has patience, they will not allow themselves to rush to judgment either. Because they accept that the, the other person has different needs. The other person has a different reality. That the other person has different struggles that they're dealing with. That is the greatness of life. That is the greatness of how we grow with this trait of patience. 
So we, we need to recognize that one outburst of anger or frustration is like throwing that load off our back. A patient person doesn't throw overboard a friendship for his personal unleashing of a load. And this we see many, many times where someone loses their patience. There's other things that they lose with that patience. And that's many, many times it's a friendship. Sometimes it can be a marriage. Sometimes it can be a lifelong work uh, where someone loses their patience. You see people who, who lose their patience with regards to uh, a project they're working on. So they take it and they break it right, out of frustration, right? Why? That's the same as taking your friendship that you've been working on so many, for so many years and just unleashing your anger Again, that lack of patience can destroy, can destroy so much of hard work. All right? Is there any? Are there any questions so far? The We Learn system that we're on. I want to thank my friend Naftali Hanfling for uh, making it available to us. I want to share with you one story about what patience really means. This is one of my favorite stories. I, I think I've shared this before uh, in the Beth Yisrael class, but it's a story about Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein was one of the leading. Torah authorities in the United States. Uh, he passed away at an old age of, uh, I believe he was 94 years old. Uh, he passed away in 1986. A woman once called his house on a Friday afternoon. It was getting close to Shabbos. And we know that there's always chaos in a home uh, before Shabbos. It's, you know, getting prepared, getting ready, getting all the food, getting all the, everything organized, getting all the kids bathed and showered and, and cleaning the house, setting the table, getting ready for, for an incredible day of, of celebration. So it's, it's a time of, you know, it, it's a time of great, great challenge in a Jewish home. So this lady, this older woman calls up the home of Rabbi Moshe Feinstein and Rabbi Feinstein was busy at the time. She says, oh, hello. Can I please speak to Rabbi Feinstein? One of the students had picked up the phone and he says, you know, Rabbi Feinstein is busy at the moment. Can I help you? So she says, yes, I am calling to speak to Rabbi Feinstein because I wanted to know what time candle lighting is. So the student says, you know, you don't need to call Rabbi Feinstein. Rabbi Feinstein is a very prominent rabbi and he's very busy. And you don't need to call Rabbi Feinstein to ask uh, candle lighting time. You know, you can just open up any Jewish calendar and find out what time candle lighting is. If you'd like, I can even send you one. And he tells her what time candle lighting is. And she says to me, you know, I've been calling Rabbi Feinstein every single Friday for the past 25 years. He's never said a word about calendars. Imagine that. Imagine that. 25 years every single day, every single Friday. This woman has been calling the rabbi to find out what time candle lighting is. And he never, ever lost his patience. He never, ever even thought to tell her, you know what? Why don't you just get a calendar? You know, she probably opened up the yellow pages, looked on the rabbi. She found Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. She says, okay, this is a, probably a nice rabbi. Let me call him and ask him what time candlelighting is. 25 years he's been answering that question, never, ever said a word about calendars. Right? That patience. It's understanding that another human being is extremely valuable. That another human being may not think the way I think, may not act the way I act, may not want the things I want, may not understand the things I understand, and it's perfectly fine, right? It really is an incredible, an incredible trait. If one is able to master the trait of patience, they are the richest of all people on planet Earth. Of course, we must be cautioned that patients should not bring about carelessness or lack of concern for another human being. Someone who does something sinful and we see it, or if someone does something bad that has a close connection with this person, has a close connection with us, it should not be that we ignore and or never comment. We should critique, but in a non-angered fashion and with the complete intention to help the other person correct their way when the right time comes, okay? It's such an important thing. Now, my wife, as, as many of you know, is a total angel. Uh, she's an incredible woman, and she really has never done anything, anything ever to hurt me, to harm me, at least not that I'm aware of. And I think I know her pretty well. 
I'll tell you a quick story. So it was one time I can remember in the almost 20 years that we're married that she did something that really, really embarrassed me. I mean, I was embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I was just, I went into the other room and I stopped myself for a second. I said, you know what? I'm pretty mad right now. I'm not going to say a word about this for two weeks. Two weeks, I'm not going to say a word about it. And it was an amazing thing because I came out, put on my nice face, happy face, and I just kept on going. Two weeks later, it wasn't in the moment. I wasn't upset. I wasn't, you know, it, it, the defense wouldn't have been on. The offense wouldn't have been on two weeks later. I had a nice dinner with my wife and I brought up, I said, you know, I'm sure this wasn't unintentional. I'm sure that uh, you didn't... Uh, you didn't mean to do this, but, you know, it really hurt me. And I said what had, what had happened. And with, a, with just a little bit of patience, bringing it up that two weeks later, you know, it was accepted lovingly. It was, it was something I was able to say in, an, in, a, in a, an effective and in a fruitful manner. But just a little bit of patience was what I realized was the key because so many times I've seen it here in this room where I've had couples argue and fight in front of me talking about issues. If they only had, you know, applied a little bit of patience, one little ounce of patience, not responded that moment, not said that snarky remark, you know, for just, you know, just a day, just wait, just an hour, just wait, just Take a moment and not spit it out. It is so critically important for a person to, to, to have that patience, to not blurt things out, to not say things that are going to potentially be hurtful and impact the relationship uh, that's, that's so precious and important. Many times the lack of patience and we spit out a, a comment that could be hurtful, it could be painful. You know, it's very interesting if we go to the, the topic of, uh, of criticism. So the, the Talmud has a very, very important statement that says, it says, just like it's a mitzvah to criticize someone, right? It's a mitzvah in the Torah to criticize someone. You see someone doing something wrong, it's a mitzvah to criticize them, right? Obviously, constructive criticism. But the Talmud says immediately after that, that just as it's a mitzvah to criticize someone constructively. It's a mitzvah not to criticize someone if it won't be constructive. So how does that work exactly? And most people ask, how is that going to happen? How do I know if someone is going to accept or not? Well, that's the first indication. If you don't know the person well enough to know in what way they will accept and what way they won't accept, you have no business criticizing them. You have no business reprimanding someone. Right? By the way, this is important for our children as well. I have seven children. Every single one will react differently to a comment. Every single one. So I know that you know this one is a little bit more sensitive. This one is delicate. This one can handle it. This one cannot. You have to know each human being, each individual. And if they're able to accept it, and you know, and you're saying it only for their benefit, you can't say because you have something you want to get it off your chest, right? So now they become the punching bag because you have something that you worked up on your chest, right? So now you got to let it let it out on them. Let out your... St- That's not necessarily the right thing to do. You have to do it because it's for their benefit, because I love you and I care about you. And I think that this is going to harm you potentially in the future. The future and this is why I'm bringing it to your attention. And I think that that's, that's the the patience that's required, even when it is for someone else's benefit, right? We have to make sure that it's the right, that we're doing it for the right reason. And we're not doing it because I have an anger. I have a, a I'm disappointed with someone. I'm just, I'm just going to let them know how I feel, right? If it's not going to be fruitful, if it's not going to be effective, it's only going to do damage to the relationship. It might be worthwhile pushing it off a little bit, having that patience so that we say it for the right reason and the right purpose. What we see from here, that every single relationship we have, right, it's not a coincidence that we have these relationships. We don't have relationships just as random, right? The relationships that we have are meant to be there. 
when we have a friendship with someone, what essentially what we're doing is, is we are accepting the burden of this friendship. We're accepting this individual as our confidant. We're bringing them into our, the circle of our life. And it's not a coincidence, but w- what happens is that now we carry that burden of this friendship. It's very, very important. You know, I was once uh, in yeshiva. It was a little bit in, in a downer, one of the, you know, a more difficult day that I had. And I, I needed to talk to someone. And I remember a friend of mine, I uh, was passing by, walking in opposite direction. He says, oh, how are you? And I, I, I was like, oh, oh, he just continued walking by me. I was like, you know, I was like, it was one of those, how are you? I'm not interested in talking to you, right? Many times when we reach out to someone, they need to talk. They need someone to talk to. Now, we have to learn to listen and not react, right? We have to learn to listen, to be a healthy listener, and not someone who is only trying to get our own word out. I want to share with you a story of Hillel. There were two individuals who had a, an argument, a dispute, as to whether or not they would be able to rattle off, rattle the, the chain of Hillel. Now, Hillel was a great sage, and Hillel was known for his patience. They got into a dispute, and they said, you know what, I bet you 400 gold coins that I can get Hillel to lose his cool with me. And the uh, other friend says, I'll give you 400 gold coins, and I promise you that you can't get Hillel to lose his cool. So the bet is on. And the individual goes to Hillel's, uh, to where Hillel lived, the great sage Hillel. It's Friday afternoon, again, a time of chaos in every Jewish home. And Hillel was in the bathhouse. And Hillel is in the middle of bathing, for Shabbos, getting himself ready. And some, this man who was in the bet starts uh, screaming, uh, Hillel, anybody know where Hillel is? Hillel, anybody know? Hillel hears his name being called. He goes out of the bath, he gets himself dressed, goes outside. He says, yes, my son, my name is Hillel. He says, you're the Hillel. Tell me, why do the people in Africa have big feet? So he explains to him because they they live in a place where they have um, a lot of mud and quicksand and God gave them special feet so that they don't sink in. They're able to to have more of a balance uh, under their feet. Okay, anything else, my son? No, thank you so much. Hill goes back into the bathhouse. The individual leaves. Two minutes later, he comes back. He says, Hillel, Hillel, does anybody know who Hillel is? And he asks, do you know why the people in the Far East, why do they have eyes that are, that are, that are like, you know, like the, the Asians? So he says, well, it's because they live in a place that, that, have, uh, that has a lot of sand. And so that the sand doesn't go into their eyes. God made their eyes in a special way so that they can be protected. Anything else you have to ask, my son? He says, no, thank you so much. A few minutes later, he comes back out and he asks another question, all non-relevant questions on a Friday afternoon. After he's done asking several questions, he asks, he says, Hillel, you're the one that they say that we can't anger you. We can't get you to lose your patience. He says, you should be cursed. Because of you, I'm losing 400 gold coins. So Hillel says, it's worth it for you to lose 800 gold coins for me not to lose my patience, right? That's how important having, keeping your patience, this is a story recorded in the Talmud, such an incredible, important message that we need to understand the importance of patience. The Almighty, by the way, why do we have this trait of patience? Because we say that mahu chanun afata chanun, mahu rachum afata rachum, each one of the traits that God possesses, we need to possess. Our, our charge as humanity is to emulate God. And just as God is all patient, we need to be patient. We need to learn this trait of the Almighty. The Almighty is patient with us. The Almighty takes time every, every time we do something wrong. He says, you know what? I'm going to wait. Because I know that they didn't do it. They didn't do it on purpose. I know that they didn't want to do do this bad bad deed. I know, and so on. God said, continues to give the benefit of the doubt. Continues to give the benefit of the doubt. Why? Because God believes in us. 
Because God thinks that we are so great, that we are so great. And we need to believe in other people as well, that they're great. Even when they do things that are against our liking, they do things that are against what we believe, against our values. So step number one, exercise number one that we need to do for patients. Let's think if we can do 15 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day of tolerating differences, right? Whether we hear something we disagree with. I'll give you an example. Most of us, if you're involved in the political world, you know, understanding a little bit about what's going on in politics, most people, uh, research shows that most people listen to the same exact station when they watch their news, whether it's, uh, you know, ABC, CBS, CNN, NBC, Fox News, uh, you know, NPR, whatever it is, but people listen to the same thing. That's what they get. They get, get accustomed to hearing this perspective. Wouldn't it be a great challenge for 15 minutes every day to listen to a different perspective? Just a different perspective. Just to hear something from a different, not that we have to accept it, not that we have to like it, but we should tolerate it. We should be able to just accept that there is an opinion that is different. It is such an important, it is such an important exercise to just learn to tolerate the differences. And the second is we need to to learn from Hashem about patience. The first of the 13 attributes of God's traits is patience. Even when mankind sins against him, God is patient, right? More than just patient in that he's slow to anger, right? He still gives us the benefit from those who have hurt him, right? So if someone hurts you and we use our patience properly, we need not stop giving to that person or stop smiling to them, even though they hurt us. So someone hurts your feelings, so now you're angry. You know what? When we do something that hurts God, does God stop giving us ear? Does God stop giving us food? Does God say, you know what? This person angered me. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm turning off their their ear supply. I'm going to turn off their their, their breathing system. I mean, God doesn't do that. Right? If God did that, we'd be dead because we, we all made mistakes. But yet God continues to give and to give and to give, notwithstanding the fact that we may have for years and years done something against God's will. God doesn't turn off the, the, the air supply or the food supply. He continues to give, notwithstanding the fact that we may be doing something that is against his liking. If someone does something, someone says something that is hurtful to you, should you stop smiling to them? Should you stop accepting from someone else? Should you stop being a friend with, of someone else because they are not exactly agreeing to you on all of your opinions? Okay? Even if they hurt your feelings, it doesn't mean that we should stop displaying the kindness. We all know that children, right, to our children, right, so you have a child who says something that's uh, disrespectful to you. Does that mean you don't feed them dinner? Does that mean that you stop hugging them? Right? You need, it's true that we need to, they need to understand that this is, may not be the proper way to speak to a parent. That's true. But it doesn't mean that we turn off the supply. And when we have the ability to exercise that patience, right? That is, it's an unbelievable power that we have to continue to bestow kindness on someone, even when things they say or do hurts us, offends us, or something we don't agree with. The Talmud says that someone who hears his own disgrace and doesn't respond is forgiven of all the sins. That's how great it is. Imagine you're in synagogue. Imagine you go to synagogue. And the person who has the seats next to you says out loud, Oh, so Lily, you decided to show up, didn't you? Right? And they say that in front of everybody. And everyone's like giggling and laughing. And it's like, you know, on your expense. That's embarrassing. Who wouldn't be embarrassed from such a statement? Right? but you don't respond. You know what the Talmud says? The Talmud says that someone 
right? Hanela ve'ino olev, someone who's offended and doesn't offend in return and doesn't respond, is forgiven for all of their sins. That's how great it is. So we think to ourselves, no, I'm going to stand up for myself. It's okay. You have such a great, I'll, I'll tell you, it is, it is an amazing story that I heard uh, not long ago. A great a, a man came over to the rabbi and he says to the rabbi, what do I do? Someone embarrassed me so seriously in public. I don't know what to do. Uh, should I respond? Should I not respond? Should I write a letter? Should you know how? He says, first thing I want you to do is I want you to give me a blessing. Because someone who has no sin is considered righteous. You're such a holy person. that you. It says that someone who's embarrassed and doesn't respond is forgiven of all their sins. You're a righteous, holy person. I want a blessing from such a person. Right? There is such a greatness to someone who's able to forego and just be patient with other people. It is really an incredible thing. Okay, we're going to stop here. I think we have a lot to work on to think about what it means to be patient. Patient means that I'm willing to carry that burden a little bit. Now, again, that doesn't mean that a person should, should, should carry a burden within them, in their, in their, in their guts, in their kishkas, and just never, never say it. No, that's not what we're saying. That, that could be dangerous. That could be, you know, from a health standpoint, that could be dangerous, right? A person needs to be able to let it out, but it has to be at a proper time. And it has to be for the right for the right purpose, right? And if you know what, sometimes it may even be to talk about it with a third person, let it out to a third person, and privately they don't need to even know who it is, but just to to vent it out. Patience is a really an incredible trait that really helps a person become such a great person through the work in this trait.